Good evening. Hello. Hello. Good evening from myself and Mr. Chalan. Oh, good evening, Deborah. You're first on pole. Oh, now that's a lovely name. Is it pronounced? Oh, Natasha? No. Please tell me, Natasha, if that's wrong. That's not how we would normally spell it over here. Pam, good evening. Wendy, hello. Hello. From hello. <laughs> It's been so lovely to be in touch with you. Karen, good evening. Caroline, hi. Oh, I know. Oh, hi, Philippa. <laughs> I'm a bit warm, actually, to be honest. Hi, Valerie. <laughs> Hello, lovely. Hi, Brian. Bri hi to the bro. Oh. Andreen, good evening. Excuse me, drinking my coffee. Good evening, Heather. Mark made me it, and it, and I th oh, Monica. Good evening. There, sorted. Sorry about that. Oh, hello, Mrs. Walsh. Mrs. Walsh is in the building. Oh, blimey. Off, eh? <laughs> oh you've enjoyed the Monday. Oh, I'm oh so pleased. Oh, another Wendy. Good evening. Oh. It's lovely that you're here, Andreen. Really lovely. So, I've got the uh, good evening, Yvonne. I've got the penultimate night for our Christmas countdown. Hi, Gail. Hi, Beryl. Shelley. Shelley. Hello. <laughs> Jean just made my coffee. Don't blame you, Jean. That coffee Mark made me was lovely. Vanessa. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Oh, I've got a nice bunch in. Well, I've always got a nice bunch in, haven't we? Oh, good evening, Ruth. Yeah, so I've got the penultimate um, evening. Oh, Elizabeth, Angie. Oh, my. Lord. Oh, do you like me? <laughs> I put it on because it's my. Um, it's not my Christmas jumper. Pre Christmas jumper. It's a pre Christmas jumper. Now, if you see, it's it's sort of like a bit Christmassy, but it's sort of more wintry than Christmassy. But I thought, I haven't got my Christmas jumpers out yet, obviously, because it's not December. <laughs> um, and um, so I like to obviously get them out from that store them in, a, in, you know, in packets and put them under the bed. And they all need washing before I wear them. And I thought, oh, I can't do that yet because it's not even December. Anyway. I know, we've got lots of Wendy's in this evening. Yes. Right, I'm going to um, turn the camera over and then we'll talk about what we're going to do. Okie dokie, let me turn them around to make sure I've got them. Okay, right. You need a Santa jumper. I've got some, Mum, but I've got lots, but they just need... It's not Christmas It's yet. not Christmas in our house until at least December. So, um, <laughs> I will. Pro I promise I'll wear a Christmas jumper on the next live because it will be December properly, won't it? But I thought, well, this will do just for this evening to try and make an effort. Good evening, Leslie. You just call me before I just turn the f uh, phone over. There we go. Lovely. Smashing. I say before I turn the phone over, but actually Mark's just done it for me. Bless him. Thank you very much, Mr. Channing. He's my unpaid floor manager, unpaid, director, unpaid producer. <laughs> oh, it sounds as if he's got such a hard job. Fortunately, being married to me, I think maybe. Anyway, so I've actually got two projects, as you can see on my desk. And the reason why I've got the two is because they are A, using the same same stamp sets and also B, they're all... Tracy's in with it as well. Oh, good evening, Tracy. Um, they're also sort of like in the same, um, the same theory of, of sort of stamping, pattern building. So, um, yeah, so anyway, so we're going to make this one from start to finish. 
And what we'll do is we'll see what the time is. I've got this one already, but if we don't have time to put it all together, then I will make sure that I show you how we actually put the main piece together. Okay, so let's crack on and then we'll get some work done. I'll put my, that card up there. Lovely. Right, so we'll do this one first. It's actually a seven by seven. Um, this was one of, um, as you know, these were two of the um, ideas that I sent um, for the fabulous stamps um, from Emma. Um, and Julie asked me if I would um, do these for this evening. So um, I hope everybody's enjoyed all the, um, the lovely lives. I know I have. Um, watching everybody else's it's been super I've only missed one on an actual life but I did watch it back um, I think that was firework nights on the Saturday and I think we were um, uh, watching fireworks how rude of me anyway so this one is um, it's just really really simple but it's just a bit quirky it's a little bit different um, it's just something that we can all do if you have um, the stamps or if you have something similar that are small and you can pattern build with them. I love pattern building with stamps and um, I, I just find it a nice challenge to sort of like do something different with a stamp rather than basically stamping it out. Not not that any of us just basically stamp out. We always find something really lovely to do with them. So um, I'll take this off because um, it, it'll be all shiny. So this is the um, Christmas Elements um, set. Yes, um, I have got these already on the block waiting. That's where, where that's where they are. Um, so if you was lucky enough to get these, I know that we are all sold out. Um, obviously, have a look on the stockist list to see um, if... Um, oh, that doesn't belong on there. It's a rogue stamp, but oh, I know. I think I was using it the other day with this set, and it's such a little diddy one that I wanted to put it on there. It's from Hazel's um, Christmas um, set from the other night when I was using it. So I put it on there for safekeeping. Um, I know, just sort of behave and sit there while I put it on the right one. So, um, Emma's Christmas Elements, and it's an A6 size. They are little stamps, but with a huge amount of personality. And I'm sure that you've seen all the set, all the um, design team ideas that we've made with these. And also, of course, don't forget to look on Pinterest because Julie always puts them on there as well. Okay, so um, we're using that set, and we're also using Emma's Christmas Florals. Although I have to say. Personally, I think this one, this one, and this one is definitely not just for Christmas. I'm going to be using these all year round. And I know, uh, again, um, lots of the team did use them on um, everyday cards as Anne's well just as. Come in, catching the first line. Who's that side? Anne Puddicum. Oh, lovely. Oh, you managed to catch one in the countdown, Anne. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Well, you can look at them going back anyway because they've all been um, downloaded onto YouTube if you wanted to have a look and they're re really easy to find even I could find them so that says something right so they're the stamp sets that we're going to be using in the first uh, project and actually in the second one as well but I'll just show you the individual ones which we're using um, on this one in particular right so like I say it's a seven by seven card but what I've, what I've got is, I've actually got um, a top folding, but it doesn't matter. You can still have it side folding. It makes absolutely no difference at all. It's just that I had this uh, card blank and I thought, yeah, it's the one that I'm wanting the size wise, so I'm going to use that. I then got a piece of lovely red glitter. Um, obviously, you can choose whatever glitter card you want or whatever back backing piece that you want. Um, you could go with obviously um, gold. Um, I perhaps won't go with white because there's a lot of white in the actual card card itself. Um, I chose the red because obviously we've got the red on the berries on the tree. We've got the um, I did put a little bit of the red to coordinate behind the Noel. Okay, so 
um, that was my idea. Now, for those that are you, of you that are very astute, you'll notice my very obvious mistake. I got a little carried away with myself today. I made this early today so that I could show you an actual finished um, card because, of course, I was all go over to Julie. And you'll notice the mistletoe was actually got red berries on. Yes, I know. I know you're all laughing and you're thinking, what is she doing? But you know what? This is a world of Joe Channon and anything can go. So anything can happen. Yes. Anything can happen. And you know what? I'm as well taking up red berries on this year. It's not a problem. But it's. Um, I think it looks pretty anyway. I didn't mean to do it. They did. Ought, they ought to be white. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Um, so yeah. So that's our base card. So we've actually that would that just. Um, um, a sort of a, a quarter, not even a quarter of inch less than the main card and then this piece that I've got here is four and a half by six and a half okay that's my background piece but what we are going to do um, first we're actually going to use a piece of this is actually a piece of scrap card that I'm using, um, so I know we all we all do it, don't we? Use our scrap card, so it's white on white, but you'll soon see me stamping on it. So this piece here, the the tree, is actually obviously on a different piece of card, uh, which is fantastic because if you go wrong, and then you can just get another piece of card and do it again, can't you? <laughs> Rather than doing it on your nice piece of card, that um, speaks from experience. Right, on this one, uh, on this particular tree, on this card, we're going to just be using this one Christmas tree. All right, and we're also going to be using, um, turn it around, we're going to be using the, um, the Shady Lane, which is um, the Versifying Claire. But of course, whatever um, colour green or uh, colour um, type of ink that you've got, you know, um, it needs to be quite a crisp ink, so uh, something like the Versifying Claire or something similar would be marvellous. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to use my ruler. I'm not going to use all this piece of card, but um, I'm, I'm going to put it at the bottom so that at least I can start on a straight line. Because that's easy done, isn't it? Especially when you've got white, white and white and what have you. And you can soon get a little bit, and it can, as you go along, it can be a little bit over like the leaning tower of pizza now right so what we're going to do first is we're going to ink up our set now i'm going to say i am a massive pain when it comes to workshops for telling my students not telling them off because i never tell anybody off because it's just not my thing but for saying to any of my ladies and gents that come to stamping classes that you must always take the ink pad to the stamp nice light tapping and then ink up but you know what tonight i'm going to break all the rules because oh, yeah i know because of speed and because obviously if i keep doing that turning it over doing that turning it over doing it it's going to take forever because it's the same stamp that i'm going along with so i am going to initially do it so nice light tapping and i'm going to start in the middle okay the tree trunk, the bottom of the tree trunk, wants to just butt up to the ruler. Not actually touching the ruler, but just using the ruler as a guide. Philippa threatens you're a rebel. I know, Philippa, and do you know what? Jeez. I never do it. I never do it, honestly. But do you know, look, if I keep doing this, it's going to <laughs> it's going to take forever, isn't it? So I thought, you know, I'm going to apologise now before I start, because I know. So, yeah. And I know what's going to happen next week when I see all my ladies on a Wednesday. They're going to go, oh, Joe Channel, you broke the rules. You just have to edit that bit out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, quite a, it's quite a big bit, though, Mark. That's the only problem. Mm. Now, what you need to do is, for this size of tree, obviously, if you want a bigger tree, you need to expand the idea but you want seven. So you need to go in um, odd numbers. So that was my middle one. So one, two, three, either side. Hmm, am I going to get this one here? Oh, I am, yes, of course I am. And three, either side here. Right, lovely. 
So this is that's why I've, I've added my ruler, so I've got a nice straight line. Even though it's going to be cut out, I still didn't want it all going all skew with, as if the scaffolding's fallen down and it's all gone a bit pear shaped. Right, so doing this also, because that gives you like an invisible line, doesn't it? It's quite good if you want to just make a background. Um, you know, say if you want to do a, a, a full background of these trees on some background paper, which would be rather nice. You could then just move your ruler up to the tops of the trees because you've got, they're all the same because it's the same stamp. You've got them straight here, put them at the top of the tree there and then you could stamp and then all or even just at the bottom there and keep stamping along and then you're going to get this lovely background um, which would be fabulous. Anyway, we don't need a ruler now because we've got our, our straight line and we're quite happy with what we've got. So we're just going to continue. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go in between the trees. But what we need to do is, and hopefully you can see me okay, we need to go inside this gap here with the tree trunk. Now, it is going to overlap onto here, but I don't want you to worry about that because it will overlap because obviously you've got a bigger a bigger space um, and not as big a space as what the tree is but it will look as if it's just a little bushier than than it should be what we're aiming to do is to keep this line as oh, straight as possible oh hi julie so try and keep the um the line on the edge as straight as possible so just continue. I find this really, really quite satisfying, just stamping rows of things. Um, I have apologised already, Julie, for actually going onto the ink pad and not taking the ink pad to my stamp. Um, just in case, yeah, just yeah, in case I, the first bit, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to get the sack. <laughs> It's just for speed this evening. I wouldn't normally do it, but because we've got a lot of trees going on. Of course, because we've got um, clear stamps, of course, we can do all of this pattern building, which is marvellous. Um, if we had rubber stamps, like we used to do, we yeah, well, a, wood, a wooden block. Oh, a wooden block. Can you remember? Mind you, I've got lots and lots of stamps still that are wooden blocks and they're absolutely amazing. It'd be a guessing game, wouldn't it? it? Would, well, you couldn't do it. You actually, you just could not do it. It would be, if you got it right even once, let alone twice, you'd be marvellous. Right, so you can see how it's developing. Each time you move up, of course, you're missing um, a tree. Oh, no. Oh, no, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> and then... Uh, and then, finally, one at the top. So we've got a tree. Yeah. Hello. Oh, no. Just with one little tiny stamp. Who thought that you could make a tree out of a little tiny stamp like that? No, of course you could, because I know that you're all clever like that. That's nearly now, a forest. It is a forest. <laughs> I'm just going to give, it is almost dry, but I'm just going to doubly make sure, because I don't want to, um, I don't want to smudge it. Now, if you hear any rattling, it's only Mark. We haven't got mice. Um, he's, um, he's in the background um, making something right so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this out and as you can see I've cut the trunk of the bottom of the trees at the bottom there's no point in trying to mask it so that you don't do it because you're going to cut it out anyway so it really doesn't make any difference whether you just just don't worry about it it makes it doesn't like I say it doesn't make any difference because it doesn't spoil the pattern at all okay so just cut that bit off and then just go up the tree 
just dipping in the bits that are a little bit further in. There we go. There we are. And then the same on the other side. out really it's set really simple you don't even have to go wiggly you can just go straight if you want to table you don't have to do wiggly right so we now need a tree trunk so so we've got our tree and now we need a tree trunk so we're going to use the same stamp um oh, going to use Harrison has just changed channel so obviously phil's on the other one is he um what day is it? Thursday. He could just be. Sue Lee's is just in the house as well. Oh, hello. Hi, Jean. Hi, Sue. Did you say Sue? Yeah. Lovely. Right, so the, the tree trunk, I might be pushing my luck with that bit, but I'll use that for something else. So we want, um, I think we want, hmm, let me just see, I think we want four, four. Yeah, just let me put the ruler down again. So start in the middle. One. Oh, uh, the ink that I'm using is the pine cone. Two, three. Yep, he's on the other side. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Jean's one of my very bestest friends, but um, if it's me or Phil. Friends, yeah. Phil Martin, <laughs> there's no excuse, and I completely agree. Um, but she's with us now, bless her. Right, so I've got four here. Um, it might be a bit wide, I don't know. We'll see. We can always slim it down a little bit. Right, exactly the same as what you did for the um, the main tree. And obviously not as big of course and we're also going to just turn that around for this one so I'm going to cut that off because I want to just I know that looks funny don't worry it's gonna look it's gonna look fine <laughs> don't worry there why would we worry about a little bit of stamping Right, let's put that to Jean's, uh, Jean's asking, is it Jean who made the chocolate wrap? Yes, it is. All right. Yes, it is. It's um, I've, we've got two two of my really really good really good friends on this evening, and um, two Jeans. We call one little Jean and one Skeggy Jean, and it's Skeggy Jean Jean Harrison that did the sweetie um the the chocolate bar. Yes, yeah. So. Uh, Right, so we're just going to, now when we get to this bit, I'm just going to chop the top off there because we want a flat piece, don't we, for the, in fact, I'm just going to, I did that wiggly without thinking, but I do want it straight. Right, so, this bit, and we'll keep that bit, that'll be useful. Right, so now what we need to do is... We need to do a little bit of inking to make it come to life. So we'll have, I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, um, uh, what would you call it, tree? Like, I mean, I know you're not going to get trees in, in the woods, you know, this triangular, but, you know, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? It's just, um, I'm just trying to think of a word that I can use. Right, so I've just got peeled paint. You could use forest moss if you wanted to do it a little bit darker, or if you wanted to do a little bit greener. Um, mowed lawn, obviously. Um, I must admit, peeled paint do, does tend to be the one my go to, which is um, we do tend to do that, don't we? I don't normally do it on, on this, but I'm I'm keeping the white there so that you can see rather than keep swapping and changing about. And then just with a little bit of um, vintage photo, just the, the bottom 
of the tree. I just, I think pattern building is fabulous. It's great fun. And also with children, I think it is a brilliant way to actually do counting as well as um, doing something arty. Because, of course, they're building patterns, so therefore they're doing something um, with numbers as well, aren't they? So it's, um, it is something that you, can, uh, you could do um, with children. I just think it would be uh, uh, quite fun, actually. You might think, nah, no, they're not getting hold of my stumps, but there you go. Um, right, so that's the tree for now. Um, so we just need to pop that um, just to one side for a minute. I'm just going to bring, so I'm bringing my base, this is the, the piece that's going to go onto the red. Um, we just need to do a little bit of stamping with this one. Yeah, that's the one. This is, um, like I say, they're off either. Of, this one is actually from um, uh, the Christmas floor, Emma's Christmas florals. Okay. Um, so all the um, all the foliage is off there. So I'm going to bring in um, the um, the shady lane again. Um, a because it's a, a lovely green, but also because everything matches nicely. And from the top, we're just going to put in a little bit of this um, mistletoe. As you can see, I have reverted back to the correct way. And stamping. I'm pleased to hear it. <laughs> it's, it was only because of the repetitive nature of it. Right, so it's just uh, you could do um, secondary generation if you wanted to a little bit. It, it is entirely up to you. I just think I just needed something at the top there that would look rather nice. Um, oh. Okay. Um, and there we go, we've done that bit. Right, so whilst that's drying, uh, which won't take many seconds at all, we can put our snow on the bottom. So I've already um, got this prepped to a certain point. I don't know whether Lou's watching tonight, but Lou bought me these scissors and they're really handy, really lightweight, very, very handy just to have, pick them up and that. Right, so start off with a straight edge and then all I've done is to, I've, I've torn the, um, these are just scraps, this is why I never throw any scraps away because honestly, you, we just, well, I know that nobody, none of us do. I know they don't. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just going to just layer those. Oh, I've got a big scissors when I've got my little one. There we go. Just layer those bits up. Um, just tucking it in to the um, the torn bit, so it looks as if. You've got some snow drifts going on, which would be lovely. Um, just going to tear that one over there like so. You can either obviously lay your, lay your glue on the actual piece or lay it on the card. It doesn't matter. You're going to cover it up anyway. So that bit there, and then one more bit. So I'm going to just tear that on an angle there, just to fill that little gap in there. And then we've got our snow. Yeah, I think we've got enough snow there. Yeah, we have. Right, so if you've got Obviously, if you've gone slightly over the edges, this is the point where you're going to just trim off. Because if you don't, once it's stuck down, once you've finished it and it's stuck down, 
you won't get the chance and it is always nice just to tidy those sort of things up. Um, right, so what's next now then? We're just going to do a little bit of uh, background stamping. So I've got this really lovely, uh, there's two snowflakes on the um, on Emma's set. Um, one tiny one, which is this one, which is absolutely delightful um, to go on background. And then there's this one, which is a little bit bigger. I mean, obviously no stamp on this set is big, um, which, which is lovely. I'm going to use, I've got a brilliant um, ink pad, Ice Blue. So those that aren't familiar with Brilliance, they are actually, um, they are, it's a glossy finish um, and it's, um, it's like it's got um, a mica in it. One thing you do need to remember with um, Brilliant ink pads is that if you put them on anything shiny, which you can do, if you put anything it on shiny, it does take uh, quite some time to actually dry. And even now, it'll take a little bit longer to dry than what it normally would. Okay. They are rather gorgeous, though. Um, I use them on parchment. That's why uh, I have them, because uh, they do look really lovely on parchment. So I'm just going around the edge with the snowflakes because there isn't a, a lot of point really in doing anything else because we're going to put the tree there. Um, just put a little bit more on that bottom bit there. So we're going to put the tree in there. Um, there we are. So I don't think I need that again for a few minutes. So. Um, also with Brilliance, they do have the plastic, which I know a lot of ink pads do. And I know some of us are a little bit lax in keeping, oh, I'm, speak, I'm, I'm saying I am as well, but a little bit lax sometimes in keeping those plastic ones. Well, with the Brilliance, please do, because they will dry up. And once they've dried up, they're no good at all. Okay, there's no, there's no bringing those back, I'll tell you now. Um, what are uh, now then? What I'm gonna do? Ah, snowflakes. Oh, I did need this. Sorry, that's me concentrating on telling you about the, the brilliant. So, this is a little snowflake stamp, which is rather lovely. So, we can just pop this in here and there. Super, super little background stamp again. There we go. Just put that back on. I'm going to leave that for the next one. Right, so that's our our background. Now all we need to do, I'm going to turn that around so I don't get my hand all in that bit there. We need to just um, give this um, a little bit of a a little bit of a colour. So I'm just putting a little bit of um, the peeled paint on my messy mat here and then I'll just very quickly, it's nothing terribly artistic about this and I'm not shading or anything, doing anything like that, I mean obviously you can. I don't think, in all honesty, you need to be too fussy, as long as you're keeping the lines obviously, you don't need to be too fussy because the main event really in this project is the tree and this is sort of like a little bit of... Um, it's like the main event is the main course and this is really the sort of vegetables that go with it really. And I'm not too hungry because I've had my tea. Right, so you can see really, really easy to colour in. Everything that um, Emma has um, drawn has been obviously drawn by herself by a wonderful hand and nothing uh, generated which is wonderful and she's left really lovely open spaces for for the colouring in to be done see this when I when I did this green earlier this is when I got carried away and got my red pen and started dotting the um, I know 
didn't make sense at all, did it? But it looked nice. I wonder if anybody would have noticed. <laughs> I bet Brian, you would have done. Notice what? Brian would have noticed that I'd done red berries instead of white ones on the mistletoe. Like a wally. Right, just the one there. Yeah, that will do. Super. Right, I'm not going to do the berries because we're in white. <laughs> what I will do though afterwards is I will put some liquid pearls on the white berries. And I promise you I'll show you that I have done as well, alright? There we go. I'm Gail, sure. Gail spotted you. Yeah, thanks, Gail. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I know it's a wally, wasn't I? Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. I think I perhaps was doing sort of like putting the um, glossy dots on and thought, oh yeah, that's lovely, that's red, and I'll put a bit of that on and, oh, let's put the berries, let's do the berries, oh, never mind. Right, so I'm just mixing a tiny bit of um, the, uh, the um, mortar surface paint, uh, it's the That's Crafty mortar surface paint, you know, I mentioned it many a time, uh, this is the acrylic paint that I use whenever I want to use acrylic paint, and I use this for... Um, doing my um, splats, just nice and gentle over, nothing fancy, there we go, and it will dry with the most gorgeous, uh, Caroline says it's a new hybrid mistletoe, there you go, Ooh. I mean how many hybrids have we got, we've got hybrid dogs, we've got yeah. hybrid cars, Yes, exactly. We've got hybrid roses. I mean, really, who why is, can't I? Who um, wants a fully electric car? Why can't we have a hybrid mistletoe? You're right, Caroline. I think we'll have a. Should we have a, um, a little uh, campaign to see if Alan Titchmarsh can. Uh, or Monty yeah. Don can actually grow one for Monty. us. Right, so that's our background. I'm going to put it on um, my um, card before I put my tree on, and then once it's on, it can stay on. So make sure I've got... Um, oh, I made a, an Australian card the other day. I know. It's with you being on here, Wendy. I'm thinking about Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I had to admit it to the to the workshop. It was one that I made for workshop, and I had to admit it because I'd gone to so much effort making this card for the workshop, and I didn't, I couldn't bring myself to make another one. So I just said, "Look, this is what I've done." So they all thought it was highly amusing because I'm always telling them, "Don't forget, don't do an Australian card." <laughs> right, I've just got this piece of card that I'm just pressing down to get the glue to um, stick to the glitter card. I've used a particularly good strong glue, actually. Um, Apparently it goes well with a topiary tree, whatever that is. Topiary. That's it. A topiary tree. Yeah, actually this, this Christmas tree could be like a topiary tree because they're the ones, Mark, that they cut with, with like to shapes. And they're not really posh. Who's got who's got a topiary tree at home? Posh tree at home. Posh tree. A <laughs> posh tree. Do we do posh trees in Lincolnshire? Yes, of course we do. Right, so looks a little bit. That look on the squish. No, it'll do. It'll be alright. Actually I might just do we just go on the sides a little not, bit. Not all trees are straight up. No, you're right. These are definitely, this is definitely a hybrid Christmas tree, but you know what, it's fun, so who cares? Right, so that's better. I had a little bit too much on the edge there, so I'm going to just put my colour back on because I took a little bit off. Smashing. Right, so now what we need to do is really simply, we need to just put our um, tree trunk under there. Now what's going to happen is, and I want to show you this before I actually do the next bit, 
if you just put your tree trunk in there, which which is what I want to do, you've got a, because you've got the um, glitter card here. This is obviously going to stand proud off the card, but you can't stick it down like that because it looked daft. So, um, apparently, Jean's got a squirrel and a chicken on her tree, and your mother's made a quilted one today. Sorry. Jean says she's got a squirrel and a chicken. Oh, oh, on her Christmas trip. Oh, you haven't got your... Yeah. I do hope you haven't got your Christmas tree up, Jean. Oh, well. Oh, I just think it's... You can't dust when you've got your trimmings up, can you? Sounds right. like a good idea. So, I've got a um, little bit of cardboard there, which is going to act as our spacer. And then, yes, my mum um, has been to sewing today and she's making a really lovely um, door hanger. Um, you'll, have to, you'll have to share it on Facebook, mum, when you've got it done. And it is, it's actually a fabric quilted tree, which is Ooh. rather, it's going to be rather posh. It won't take much room up in the loft when you put it away afterwards. Right, so... Well, it's not saying it's going to be done for this Christmas. <gasps> That's not nice. What are you saying? Right, so I've lifted that up and now I need to lift my... Um, obviously my tree up a little bit so that stands proud. So I've just got some more bits of um, cardboard. And for those that haven't seen us doing this, we haven't lost the plot. We are we, we do do this because it's um it saves on foam pads and it's also recycling. I know this one is a bit thick, this this um actual cardboard, but I wanted it a little bit thicker so the tree stood out nicely. Right, don't forget to put glue on your actual cardboard because if not it will won't um, stick there so pop that onto there like so and then we just need um hmm, I don't know what I could have done with just putting that underneath there let's just wriggle that down like that that's it nobody Right. Oh, Jean says she ain't got a Christmas tree up. But when she has, she's got a squirrel on it, has she? It's a chicken topiary tree. Oh, topiary tree. Has she got a... Oh, I didn't realise that she was that posh. Mmm, topiary tree. In Friskney. Yeah, look at that Right, so, a little bit of... Um, just a bit of twine at the bottom or you can put it down or if you wanted to you can get a nice piece of thin ribbon and you can put it at the bottom there and just tie it off it's up to you you know just do do whatever you want to do um now then, i did have a noel yes here now i have gone ahead and cut this because you you know i wanted to get as much in as, as possible tonight but these are from hazel's um christmas um they get the right name sentiments here we go and this is um, so I'm just going to put that down at the bottom here so what I did was I did the background one the outline in and the red so obviously matches this red and then I did the um, the obviously the Noel the words in the white so it just coordinates really well and just the last bit or two little bits just put a little tiny bit of um, glue there because I've got this little flower that looks it's the nearest to a star that I had and there's my special tool my brain tool yeah. I call yeah. it yeah here we go this is where my brain tool comes in handy oh yeah brain oh yeah this was a present from Brian, I think. 
So these are obviously glossy dots. On the first one, I did actually do the sparkle ones. Um, and I thought, well, I'll do them. I'll do these on this one. Just show you the difference if you don't have the, the sparkly ones. And these obviously look like the lights on your Christmas tree. Or your posh topiary tree, if you put lights on that. Right, so apart from the um, the pearls, in fact, no I won't because it will take too long and I don't want to waste any time. What I want to do is just put a little bit of glitter glue just on, on the tree just to give it a little bit of around the edges with the green but that's not a problem because I can do that now mm -hmm. if I could find my green oh yes yeah It just uh, it just seemed a little bit too white, but you know if you like it like that, then you just leave it. There, that's better. Right, okay. So that is our first offering. Lid on there. Those over there. And let's just try to these over there a second. And I will. Everyone reckons everybody should have a sticky picker up. Oh, it's there. brilliant, Brian. I love it. I call it my Brian tool. Sorry, Philippa. I know it was you as well, Daniel. Right. So I just wanted to get put that on a cleaner background, but it's not so clean here. Yeah. Right, so you can see that was a little bit skinnier because what I've done is I've, I've took it back a little bit, but I actually quite like the triangular tree. And obviously that's got the hybrid mistletoe on and that hasn't and it will have the berries put on shortly. So a bit of fun, um, that card. So I'll just put those to one side just for the time being and then we'll bring in um, the second one. So for this one, let me just get rid of that paper. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do, uh, show you the actual um, base and then see how we get on from there. I might have time. What, what, what's funny? There's Brian. Brian. Brian's tool, not Brian's a tool. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you said it, not me. <laughs> Right, so it's a, it's a six by six card blank, as you can see. So I've actually got a couple of layers of lovely pattern paper. Um, I've got um, just uh, anything that you've got, obviously, in your stash that's going to go with the colour scheme. Um, what I did do is I used this one um, for the back of my season's greetings. All right, so the outline... Uh, dye I've actually used the, uh, the colour of here so either use this that one uh, for that or if you wanted to use that one but I felt that that one was a little bit too light although it's going to go really lovely with the actual card itself I think that was a bit light for the but you know it's whatever whatever you like to do so so we, first of all what we need to do is we need to draw a circle and this is really technical I'll just stick that down. I'm going to use my double sided tape and a pencil. I'll get that straight pretty much in the middle and just, just draw a circle. 
just happens to be on your desk it's the right size and everything's all good so what we're going to do is we're going to start now oh, we're going to use two christmas stamps this, uh, two of the christmas tree stamps this time we're going to alternate them so we're going to use the one that we used in the first project and we're going to use the um the other one that's on the set i'll show you actually on the black because it's easier so it's this little stamp here which is rather lovely um so what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to again use the um the shady lane um and we're going to start at the top now there's a reason for starting at the top because it will it will actually meet but if it doesn't meet you can put a bow at the bottom or you can put the flower on top of it it did actually meet and I didn't put the flower on just because of that because you'll see that but it is a it's a bit of a fail safe um, idea if you want to do right so um, like I say start at the top now what you're going to do is you're going to put the tree trunk is actually going to go beyond the on um, so the tree is going to go on the actual circle and you'll see now what I mean. Obviously this will just wheelbar out, you won't see this. So you've got that there. And then you're going to alternate it with one tree and then the other. Now you need to be snug with these to make it go all the way round. Or if you prefer, if you don't want it snug, you can go a little bit gappier um, and then you'll just need, you'll just have less trees. But I quite like it like this because um, it, it looks like a, more of a, a wreath, doesn't it? Well, that wasn't very good, but it'll be all right. I'll be able to dump over it a little bit. Right, so the base of the tree, either, either one, just on the actual penciled circle. And you just keep going. And obviously instead of just putting that down and then doing the next one, do two at a time. Does anybody else like pattern building with stamps? Let me know. I absolutely love it. Everybody likes the pattern building, yeah. yeah. Good. Oh, please, because it's just a, it's just fun. It's just a really nice, fun project to do. But also, it's um, it looks quite smart as well. And these little stamps are just so made for doing this. They really are. I just keep turning it round. And swapping your trees. There's no reason why you couldn't use maybe a couple of the other um, elements to do something similar. I haven't had a go at that, but I'm sure that we could um, do something like that with the other elements. It's just, um, roughly the same size. You don't want anything that's really sort of too much bigger. Perhaps somebody will have a go at that and show us what we've been doing. What's that? using um, a di the different stamps to go around. Oh, yeah. So now we've got one little gap left. Yeah, Philippa likes, uh, yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, Philippa I'm does. sure it's something that Philippa would do. There you go. And when I did it for the first time, I literally picked up the um, double-sided tape and did a circle and it worked. And I thought, ooh, that was good. Well, as in not good that I didn't, but good that it actually worked first time because I really didn't expect it to. So I'm not, I think the uh, angels were looking down at me. Right, so we've got that done. Um, and now what we're going to do is um, I actually used, uh, again, one of the foliage stumps for the corners. And we would be able to have berries on these because it's holly. So 
I just put one there and just turned it and just put one there. Just in the opposite. I didn't do them on each corner. Um, because I liked, I wanted to put um, the flower down in the, in the corner, uh, in the far end. There we go, so we leave that like so. If we've got time to clear them, then we will do, but if not, you know what we do. Now, so now what I did was I took the little snowflake, so on the um, tree, project we used the bigger one which was this one so I'm just going to take that one off and then for this one we're going to use this one which is the teeny weeny one oh, so just leave it alone you've got a cast card whatever that means I know actually you're right it's a uh, clean and simple Ooh. yeah I know if I did that's exactly what I've got it's not like me though is it Brian that's the problem that is the problem. I might be itching and looking at it thinking, nah, that's not finished. I can do cast cards, but in fact, that could be something that I could really strive to do in the new year. That could be sort of, I don't make New Year's resolutions because I'll be honest with you. I think if you need to change something, you need to do it whatever time of the year and not just at New Year. But um, I know it's a good excuse at New Year to do it. But it could be something that I could really, really try really hard to do. And I wouldn't get such dirty hands all the time. <laughs> I wouldn't go down the village into the shops and they look at me as if to say, what have you been doing today, Jane? Right, so you can see now I'm using the little, the little tiny weeny snowflake. And in between each of the trees, there is a little gap. And it fits. Do you know, I, I did wonder when I was doing this whether um, Emma designed these just specially, specifically oh, I couldn't hear that word, eh? for me to do this with it. Now turn that round. There we go. Nearly there, so it doesn't take long. And I know you can get these fancy, um, oh, I don't know what they are, wheels or stencils or templates or something that you can do these and get them in exactly the right um, place, can't you? I know lots of people have, uh, have actually designed these, and but I, I don't, I don't, you just don't need them. Shirley says it's a festive mandala. Oh, that's, oh, now then, Shelley, thank you. That's a lovely, a lovely description. So now... Stamping rings. That's it. Thank oh, you. Brian. Thank you, Brian. I mean, I know that they're really clever, but you definitely don't want one for this project. Why? Well, because we're just going, we used the double-sided oh, tape, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm all for trying things basically before I go running to get anything else because I, I like... Vanessa's got to go, but she's... Oh, bless uh, you. Thank you, Vanessa. She'll be looking at photographs tomorrow. Oh, thank you, lovely. Thank you very much. I do appreciate you um, you coming in. And don't forget, Julie is on tomorrow night for the... It is, it is tomorrow night, isn't it? Yeah. For the last one. Oh. That feels as if Christmas is over already. Right, just one more. So can I fit that in there just there? Yes, lovely. So, you can see now what I did there was, so for the first row I did it in between. For the second row I just literally went above the, the tree just a little bit, just outside. And, um, yeah, it just... Uh, works rather well doesn't it so obviously a little tiny stamp be careful i will put those back all 
properly afterwards. Um, oh, I didn't mention this was another Pearl um, uh, Brilliance ink pad that I've used, and this was the um, the Jade. We're actually getting these back in stock soon because we haven't had them in for ages. Um, yeah, so you can see there it's got that beautiful, beautiful mica, that um, really gorgeous finish to it. Um, right, so is it okay for me just to continue or do you want me to, uh, 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 Philippa, what do you think? Do you want to go ha Oh, that's rude, Mr Chairman. Oh, Philippa will be you uh, doing something festive on Tuesday morning. Oh, lovely. Is that the... Oh, fabulous. Oh, that's lovely. Um, right, so I'm not going to actually carry on with this because it's only colouring now, to be quite honest. So what I am... Oh, i tell you what I did do, though. I did add um, some snowflakes, uh, some... Um, uh, I don't know, this, the, this little snow flake um, stamp that I used in the first one. I did use that but I used it after I'd done the um, the green, which is the peeled paint around the edges. Okay, but this does need to be dry. You must remember if you are using, you haven't used your brilliant sinks for a while and you bring them out and you haven't used them for a while, you forget how long it takes to actually, for them to dry because they're a little bit, uh, they just take a few more minutes. Okay, um, by the way, they're fantastic on acetate as well. Um, so what I did was from here, I've actually I coloured all of the trees in um, all the way round. I just did a little bit of gold on the actual tree trunks. Um, I've um, I then went ahead and coloured the, um, the holly. And actually, when I could have put the red berries on, I put gold berries because, and I'll tell you why, because I put gold on the trunk, tree trunks, and I thought mm, it'd be nice to marry it up. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, I did a few gold splatters because I thought it would look quite nice, but that's each to everybody's own um, opinion. Obviously do rub the, um, the, the pencil circle out because you don't need that. And then um, I have got somewhere, yes, I have got my season's greetings, but it looks as if I've maybe popped that somewhere else but it will be fine, we, can, we don't have to do that because we've got it all finished anyway. So that's how it would be, all coloured, obviously, look a little bit different. Got our season's greetings on there, but the one thing that else I did do, and I want to, want to show you, uh, where have I put them? I had them right here in front of me. Brian says he likes it just on the white. Do you know, actually, Brian, surprisingly for me, it is really surprising for me. I quite like it as well. Um, it does look rather rather neat, doesn't it? And you could maybe use your Versafine Claire, the Shady Lane, in here to actually put um, to actually stamp the the sentiment. Um, I've made some flowers, and now. I've, put, I've just put them, I just had them in my hand, didn't I? You saw me. I made them earlier, but um, you know what? I've got another one in here, so I shall show you it. What are those? Oh, no, they're secret. Oh, oh. Mm. So, oh, is it, gone, is it under here? No? Oh, never mind. It's here somewhere, and you might, afterwards, you'll, I'll find them. I've got three of them. So what I did here was, oh, they're here, look. <laughs> I knew I'd done them, so I thought, well, I know that I've done them. So I don't need that many. I actually, I always do more than I need, and then I put them away for another time. I can use them again. So this is um, a very pale blue vellum, um, and I've stamped the beautiful largest flower from Emma set. Let me just bring that in. You can see there's three, the three sizes. And that is the the biggest one. I've stamped them onto vellum and actually um, used white embossing powder. Now you must use an antistatic bag when you're doing this um, because it 
obviously vellum parchment anything like that is really static so you must do that um, and don't don't forget to do that because um, you will uh, collect obviously extra pieces of the embossing powder also be very careful when you're heating it because obviously vellum is um, very thin and um, it will it will um, catch really quickly so just do it just do it on a low heat and it does work I do it an awful lot and I know lots of the other girls do but they're really lovely I am just going to very quickly show you um, what you can do well you can either use tweezers or to be honest what I do is I just take them and pinch them up and just with you with your now just to give it a little bit of a a run across with your nail and and then it gives it some lovely shaping or what you could do is if you wanted to you could get a large ball tool and it would need to be a large ball tool and actually um, emboss it even more so it makes it um, even more embossed and it, the white would come through obviously with the um, so that gives it that lovely that lovely shape and then when you've got two um, so if you want to put a flat one on the bottom or you could shape that one and this one and then offset them that's what I've done with this one um, or the, the flat one on the bottom and then the raised one on the top looks rather nice as well or if you really wanted to go to town you could have three and then you've got really pretty really pretty flower there but personally I think two's nice um, stick them together obviously be very careful what you stick them with because you can see through the vellum but a little tiny bit of glue in the middle just to hold it just for a couple of seconds and then if you want to just put some either some seed beads or um, a gem in there in the middle and then uh, and then that would look in fact look at that on the on the plane that would look rather nice wouldn't it mm, lovely. that could be a cast card but that's how I did the flowers so hopefully um, you've got a little bit of inspiration from, from those. So we've got this one and we've got this one. So using the same stamp sets um, and uh, yeah, the foliage flowers of um, Emma's um, florals and of course the little elements of the um, Emma's Christmas element set, which is I just think that they're fabulous, I really do. So, um, we'll just turn you around and um, say our good nights. Here we go. Lovely. Oh, thank you ever so much, Anne. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. I know that um, I've... Uh, oh, thanks, Wendy. Oh, thank, thank you, Brian. <laughs> Big respect to Mark. Yeah. How do you do it? Like Good this? Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Virginia, thank you ever so much. Thank you. Thank you everybody that's um, joined in this evening and for all the other nights as well. I know that everybody's had, um, I know everybody, all the design team have had a, a ball <laughs> doing all the um, all the lives. And um, oh, thank you ever so much, Julie. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Um, and um, if there has been any questions, I'm, I'm sure that um, Philippa, Julie or Tracy would have been able to um, answer them. But if not, I'll go back and have a little look once I get home. And um, and if there's any questions afterwards, oh, thank you, Wendy. Oh, thanks, Jean. Um, if there is any questions after... Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> yeah. um, Andrew, thank you. Thanks ever so much. Um, if there is any questions afterwards or whatever, then please don't hesitate always. Um, and please don't forget to put all your lovely inspirations, whatever whatever product that you've got of Julie's, um, do put your inspirations and share it with everybody. Even if you're a complete beginner, everybody loves to see everybody's makes. Oh, thank you, Jean. Thank you. Um, and, um, and Julie will be back uh, tomorrow night at 7 30 am I, I hopefully i'm correct in saying that thank you heather thank you ever so much brian thank you darling um and um yeah i'll i'll see you soon thank you angie um i will see you in um uh december uh for my regular julie um hickey um live and um yeah 
up until then I'll see you on the Facebook page and please say hello okay all right thank you ever so much and uh, have a lovely rest of the it is 7 30 thank you Julie I've got 7 30 in my head I thought oh I hope that's right okay um yeah I'm gonna go and take this jumper off now because I'm really warm <laughs> I thought it was a good idea to put this on but it's maybe not okay thank you ever so much I really appreciate it all right good night Bye. good night